Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I am building an alleyway book nook that has little shops in it. This is what we're starting with and this is what it's going to end up looking like. So a little bit of work but you can follow along and always leave questions below and I would do my best to help. These are the instructions. They're quite vague but it's not super complicated, so we're going to get through it. Here's a little note. I ordered it from a company called Cool Cats on Etsy. This is like a little mirror for the back part. And there's pieces, small pieces that came with it. I didn't use most of them. I built my own items that uh, go into the little shop windows and along the little alleyway, but you can certainly use them if you want. That's the top and that's where the light goes in. This is what came with it. I, in the end, did not use it. I didn't think it worked very well, so I ended up ordering something. So pieces pop off. So you start doing it, start building by popping these little pieces out. Those are some trees and other items. So it's all taken apart now. Um, I didn't use all of the stuff, but that's like a drain spout from water runs down it from the top of the building down to the street. Finish popping some things out. And let's get started. Here I was confused. The door popped out. And then I found a frame, a little frame. Those are loose, but don't pop them out. Um, I'm not sure why they're, they're designed to be popped out, but don't pop those pieces out. Let's start with the basics, some paper towels. A little glass of water to uh, put the brushes in when you're painting. My Gorilla Glue wood glue. I did use this kind of crazy glue type glue for a bit of it, small portion, and uh, like a little ramekin dish, I put the glue in. Also, put aside two dishes for paint mixing. Here's the pieces that go for the windowsill, that part that kind of arches out right here. Uh, we're going to start building that. And if you're new to this channel, please like and subscribe. It helps my channel grow. It helps me keep building all these little book nooks for you guys to follow along with. The next one I do will be from scratch and it will be Harry Potter themed. So anything like or comment or subscribe is very much appreciated. Here I'm going to just dab glue onto the spot that goes into the little, the little notch there. And we're going to make our way around, adding each piece. Now we're going to put the top on and it'll go in. You just kind of have to wiggle it a little, but not, uh, not too much pressure. You don't want to break the little, little notches that go into the slot. So just kind of wiggle it in and there you have it. Put it aside for a second okay so here's a little toothpick that i like to use for scraping the excess glue it's those round ones with a sharp edge so we're gonna scrape the excess glue off this window clean it up and there you have it now please keep in mind when you're putting these together the bottom part is bigger than the top part i mean like the squares on the window so you want to make sure all of the larger ones are lined up below. There's little notches where you pop those squares out. I took a piece of sandpaper and we're just going to sand down anywhere that you pop stuff out just so that it doesn't have these little bumps afterwards when you're painting. So try, try to get it done before you start painting. Just cleans it up a little, makes it smooth. Now we're going to go back and take a look at these window sills. 
So there's six in total. Four goes on one and two goes on the other. They also are in different sizes and I discovered the hard way that I put some in the wrong slots. Um, so just be aware. The smaller window has the, small, the smaller ledge and there's four of the large. So those are the smaller ones I just pointed to the bottom too. So I had to go back in later and pop those out. I do this live. <laughs> I only have one kit, so I do make mistakes and I have to go back and correct it. There, I, I just don't know. I don't understand this. So I'm just gonna glue the door into this piece of wood and I am assuming then the wood sits on top of the frame. Same with this. I think that sits on top and just elevates it out a bit from the wall. So I just am going to glue the door into that frame. So there I have it glued and I'm going to attach it to the wall. You want to make sure there's enough glue that it sticks on there and I am going to be doing quite a bit of detailing to the door later but for now let's just get them attached. Just line it up. Whenever you're gluing stuff like this uh, on, when you're gluing like near the bottom of the wall, make sure it's lined up because that wall has to sit flat onto the base and you don't want the door frame sticking down lower than the bottom of the wall. Clean up the excess glue. Again, put it down flat just to make sure that it's even to the bottom of the wall and you should be good. Now we're gonna make, I wanted to kind of go with like a beige tone. So you can, you can paint it whatever color you want. Uh, just make sure you have a couple of these plastic dishes that you can mix paint with um, available because I did multiple tones for the different uh, sections so no matter what color you choose you'll still you still may want to uh, do different tones of or variant tones of that color so have two at least ready with the, the water dish the different sized brushes and some paper towels make sure to paint all the inside of the window like I've said before in my other tutorials um, it's too late after you have after you have it put in and you have the plastic put on the inside it's too late to paint it and you see through it so make sure you paint everything we are going to put a piece of clear plastic in there you can get this with any type of packaging i always keep a little bit because i know i'm going to be making some of these book nooks so i always put some aside so you trim it to the size of the window. I had it um, sticking out a little bit on the edges just so that I could apply it because I did use that crazy glue and you really don't want that sticking on your fingers. So I glued it and then trimmed the excess off after. So it did work well to hold it. I just put a little bit down, pressed it, held it for a little bit and moved to the other side. And then you carefully have to cut it after it dries and you may choose to do a frosted type window so that's totally up to you I kind of made it like a little children's toy store I put some stuff in there that I had from leftover from back when I was let's put it aside back when I was making cards and I had some different fun things all right let's let's glue this door into this frame Glue along there. It's a little tedious. You want to really make sure it lines up, so push it on, push it onto something flat to make sure they're flat together. 
hold it for a while and I do use the Gorilla Wood Glue and it dries pretty quickly like it holds pretty fast so um, just hold on to it for a couple minutes and it should be good to go. Yeah, you can you can follow along you can watch it a little bit first and then decide what you need to to buy to make your kit like I said I had some stuff left over from when I was making cards and that's what I put in the windows and you can get stuff like that at craft shops so again we're going to put that on and hold it up make sure that it's not gonna stick out too far farther than the bottom of this wall. Clean up the glue. I always I always stress to clean up the excess glue because it's harder to clean up after it dries. So while it's still a little wet, you can scrape it off. We're going to take a look at this window. You just have to know where that's where that's joining. Joining on the wall is where you want to put the glue, and you you want to make sure it snaps in and holds. And again, don't force it. Just apply a little bit of pressure, and it should uh, pop into place. There we go. Just uh, move it around slightly and it should click in. There we go. That's great. Now you may want to paint the whole wall before you apply that in first, but I painted it after. Do a little clean up. It's pressed in nice and tight so it's not sticking out gapping out now there is a little bit on the sides that was just the way it was but I build stuff along there so I'm putting flowers so it's gonna not be visible so here's where I messed up I fixed it later but there's two different lengths of windowsill and I put in the wrong one first, but you will learn from my mistakes. So that is the correct one. Two different sizes and that top one that I was holding I'd already pried out of the wall that I put it in incorrectly. It's a smaller one it goes there and that's what it's gonna look like. So small small and the two top ones are larger. I'm going to put, again, some stuff behind the windows, but for now, I'm going to paint. Do you want to paint before you get that plastic behind the top? That is uh, the ledge that goes above the door. We'll be working with that as well. But first, we'll paint. So we're going to paint all of it, except for the door. And then we're going to go over it with um, like a thicker paint uh, 
piece that I bought, like like spat. It'll make it look like spackling. It's called modeling paste, but I wanted to have um, the wall have a bit of texture to it. So you get a sponge, and it's it's thick and lumpy, and you just blotch it. This will kind of ha give it that kind of a stucco look. And we will paint over top of this. So you can see it has some texture. Don't worry about the sides of the doors. We're going to paint everything. And I am going to add some, some details later that will cover up some of it. Yeah, flowers, some moss all around the window so I'm not too worried about that we're gonna sit it aside and let it dry now we're gonna work on this one <clears throat> same color again this is basically gonna be hidden after we apply different layers of of colors but it's the base to put under that modeling paste Make sure, again, you paint inside the windows because you don't want to have that show later on. Back to our modeling paste. And we're just going to sponge it on. Just be careful where you're going. So you can see it has that texture to it and we're going to paint over top of it. There's some of the details in the window I did. It's fun. Let's do some thicker paper. Again, it was stuff I had when I was making cards and I've attached it to the back of the window behind the little toys that I've put in. It's like a Ferris wheel and a little puppy. We're going to call it Rough and Tumble. That's the name of the store. So this is the paint that I've already been using. We're going to apply it over top. And I used a different sponge to do this, not the same one that I applied the spackly stuff on. I mixed a slightly darker tone. Because I want this multi-toned, I don't want it just flat looking. So it's going to look strange at first, but just, just bear with me. We're going to just do a little bit here and there of the darker tone. And it's the base is basically what I started with. I just added a bit more brown, a little wee bit more red, mixed it together. So there you can see my palette. a different tone. Go one more darker. It's almost like a terracotta color and I'll carry this color scheme through to the stone walkway as well. We are going to bring it down a notch after we've done that. I just want to soften it so I go back to this beige It's just layering. You you can just have a plain straight colored wall if you like. 
I just like the layering effect. To me, it gives it a little more dimension, a little more character. And we're going to set that aside, work on the next wall. I went ahead and painted those uh, windows pink. Um, later in the video, I changed it back to beige. I didn't like it. So for now, that's what they look like, but I, we, I will revert back to beige as well as the door frame. There's some of that paper cardstock I cut and I glued it down there and then I just outlined it with the, so that's, it's, it's a thicker cardstock. And then I outlined it with a gold acrylic pen. You can get these on Amazon. These are just stir sticks I got at the dollar store. I am going to put that on top of that door frame just to have it stand out a little bit more. But to start, before I, I do that, I'm going to make shingles for the top of that roof just to give it again a little bit more character. This is just like a like a thicker cardstock, like like not as thick as cardboard, but I just did two strips and then I just did the little slices. I'm going to glue them together to make it look like shingles. I'm going to make them look a little weathered. I know that you, this seems like a lot of detailing and you know, you can pause the video and follow along or you don't have to, uh, you don't have to go as detailed. That's totally up to you. So that's what they're going to look like glued together. I'm going to like play, play a little bit with, with the shingles, push some up, push some down. And after I glue it on, I'm going to paint it. So that's what it looks like attached to above the door. Again, I got my little trusty toothpick. Pop some up a little bit. And I'll play around with it a little after I paint it. So I mixed um, a bit of the brown paint with a little bit of black and a little bit of beige and I didn't soak the brush and paint. I just put a little bit on and I'm just going to dab here and there. And it's picking up a little bit of light paint that was already on the brush. And it's giving a bit of a multi-toned effect. I'm going a little bit in between the two layers. And then I'm going to dab a little bit across that actual wooden piece that's above the door. I'm just going to paint it slightly lighter. So that's, that's where that's at. I am going to add some moss to that too, so it'll give it a Kind of an older look. So I'm pretty happy with how that turned out so far. I got this at uh, the dollar store and I'm going to apply it to the top of that window and you'd want to use a sponge and apply some glue 
and just takes a bit of time. Um, it was sticking more to my fingers in the end than the window, but I got it eventually. It's just little bits like this, so it's have to grab a handful, put a good amount of glue down, grab a handful and just stick it on there. That's what it looks like. This is that drain pipe that I've got in my hand to paint that too. We're gonna put it smack in the middle. Give it a little paint. some glue and we're gonna line it up and again you're gonna have to look at this at different angles because you don't want to crook it so here's my acrylic gold pen again I'm just gonna highlight those little circle knobby type things that are on the pipe pipe joints I guess it would probably be and paint the sill, the window sill is the same color as the pipe. And now I found a little gold bead. I'm going to use it as a door handle. I had a couple of them, so I use them as the door handles. I was happy with that. And I've also gone ahead and applied moss to the shingles. Just a little bit of a, on there. These were the pieces that popped out of the window. I'm gonna make a little flower box. Got my uh, glue gun. And for my glue gun, I also use Gorilla Glue glue sticks. I find it's the best glue. So I've gone ahead and attached that to the wall. I've just done a three-sided box because the fourth side is the wall. And that's where I'm going to stick my flowers out. I have to apologize. I had to cut a little bit of the video out because when I transferred it over into the program, uh, some of it was corrupt and it was all glitching. So I had to trim a little bit out. So I'm going to paint this box similar tones to what we have there. Just a little darker shade like the um, windowsills are. Just so it stands out against the wall and you'll have to do a couple uh, couple coats over the darker edges of the of those pieces of wood just to cover it that's what it looks like I got these at the dollar store I'm gonna um, I'm gonna snip them cut little bits off and glue them with my glue gun into the little box. Takes a bit of time. I sped it up, but it takes a bit of time. You just do one at a time, stick it in there. And that's how it turned out. And we're gonna put up our rough and tumble sign. This is a little container. I don't know. I don't even remember where I bought this years ago. Like I said, when I was making cards, um, they're like little chipboards, little cardboard bits. People probably use them for scrapbooking maybe. So there's our first store. I think it looks kind of cute. And at the end above that door, I'm gonna stick this, this little sign that says toys. Take some more of these coffee stir sticks and I don't know what gets into me, but I've decided I'm gonna make shutters for the windows. So I'm gonna glue three pieces together and then trim them. And this is what it looks like. I use the glue gun, glue them together and trim them. 
then you just take a little bit of sandpaper, sand off the excess glue because you can't paint over the glue. It'll just, it'll just, it won't absorb the paint. So you've got to sand that extra glue off. Only paint the one side because the one side you're gluing down. I'm going to paint them similar to that tone. And then I'm going to go over it afterwards with some more brown and make them, you know, just a multi-toned wooden shutter. But I like how it's going. I like, I like the look of it. There we go. First set of shutters applied. So this is just brown paint that I'm going to go over and just brush them with. And I'm going to go back over again with some lighter. It's just what I do. I just want to give it a bit of a, a weathered look almost, or just not so flat. Give it a bit of life. lighter tone again. This is why you need a couple dishes to work with because I'm constantly making lighter or darker tones. And again I pull out my Tool Art acrylic pen. This came in a pack of I don't know how many were in there, 16 maybe? But I find them really handy. You have to give them a really good shake and then hold the the pen down for a while for the ink to run down to the tip when you first start using them. I'm gonna go with this in where they they were glued together, those little slots, you know, where I stuck them together. I'm just gonna line them and then it makes it look like it's actual pieces of wood attached together. I'm happy with how that turned out. I like it. So now we are going to take some more plastic now that that's painted and apply it to the windows. It looks so much better adding that, just that little detail of the plastic. So here I've decided I don't like the pink and I'm going to make it more like the, the beige windowsills and I'm going to paint around the door as well. So I'm just going to do the top part obviously because I applied the plastic I'm not going to go on the insides and that's fine you don't really notice it that much but I just didn't like it. I like the look of the beige much better and I did it around the door as well. Again, you may do something completely different in color. So here we're going to go ahead and put more of the shutters on like this. Again, gluing the three sticks together and then snipping them.
And it, yeah, I can't stress enough, don't forget to sandpaper. I just want to get it nice and smooth and get some of that excess glue off. And also be careful with your fingers with the glue gun. So that is looking nice as well. The bottom windows are narrower, so we're going to use two popsicle sticks. Just a little bit smaller, so we want to make sure they fit and it just it works out perfectly. It's the exact width of two of the stir sticks. I didn't have to figure out how to trim them anymore. It worked out. So, that was good news. Just gonna go back over and do what I did with the other ones and just do a couple different tones over top. Now I am going into a lot of detail. I know once it's put together, you don't directly look at these walls because they're on the sides. You do get a glimpse of them, but I still like to to make it as detailed as I can nonetheless. It's, it's still nice to have that, know that it's there. I think that looks really good. I'm happy with that. Again, we're going to pull out my trusty tool art acrylic pen and do the little finishing details on the shutters. gonna maybe look at the door now and again I went with this paper for that this door and that marbly looking one for the toy store this is this is gonna be like my little tea shop little cafe I'm gonna paint the door similar to the wall tone A little darker than the wall tone, but it's all in that vein, along with the uh, window sills. There we go. So those match. And we're gonna put the paper in the squares on the door. Fill that in. Go ahead and trim them. Just gonna use our Gorilla Glue wood glue, that's fine. Just spread a little bit on. You don't wanna go too too crazy, you don't want it oozing out all over the sides. Oops, there we go. And then we will line that again with the gold pen and the little male slot on the door. See that's when it started to glitch. I apologize for that. I had to skip a skip a step but I did have some more little plants I bought at the dollar store and I glued them onto the side of the door. I felt really bad. 
I had recorded that, but it was just too corrupt and glitchy. I took some of the extra of the um, stir sticks that I trimmed off the top and I added that as a little kind of fence at the at the back back of that piece. That'll be going up against where the mirror is on the back wall. Added some moss, did the gold trim the gold pen around the, the paper on the doors and put the gold bead down for the door handle. Now we're going to do the windows. See, I think it looks so much better with that behind the windows. Changes it. So this is the kind of paper I was using. So again, I have to apologize because it glitched and I had to I had to trim it, but I used that pink paper and I applied a couple more of my little pieces to the window that I had from my card making days. I'm gonna take those four colors, which has been fairly the theme through the whole thing, to do different tones on the cobblestone walkway. So yeah, check out check out your local craft stores to see if they have things like that for scrapbooking. Just fun little um, pieces you can make whatever type of store you want. Maybe it's a clothing store, maybe it's a coffee shop, maybe it's a you know um, a pet store. You can do whatever you like. It depends on what kind of little things they have and what uh, draws your attention. So here again, I'm just going to make different tones. Uh, I'm going to do random stones on this walkway. So that's the first, first layer of coloring I'm going to put down, the first, first set of coloring. And we just go darker. This is why I like to have a few different kinds of brushes size-wise. Um, so I'm using my smaller brush to get in here because some of the stones are smaller. And, and I will uh, outline them later with my acrylic pen as well. Second color applied. Again, we're going to go in and make uh, another tone slightly darker. They, you have to keep in mind as well when you're painting, they dry darker when you're working with uh, acrylic paint, so it does dry darker than it looks when, when you're first applying it. And now we will apply the final color. So that's all of it filled in. We're 
we're gonna go in and just make it look a little more worn so add a little bit of darker colors to the lighter stones vice versa I'm gonna paint that that's what's gonna be on the outside wall facing you as you look at the book at the tea time sign acrylic pen we're gonna outline like I'd mentioned earlier we're gonna outline all those stones gives it a bit of definition and that's what it's gonna look like once I get all that drawn in so that kind of suits it well the color looks good now we're, like I said we're gonna go and make it look a little more worn just take a bit of a darker one of the darker colors I mixed lightly dab on so don't soak your brush it's more of a dry brush effect and again this is a few steps here I'm gonna do so it may look a little weird but just bear with me do a little bit of lighter stuff on the darker stones let's see how I remove some of the excess paint onto the cardboard underneath just you just want it a slight dab like a dry brush effect and then I'm gonna go over with a little bit lighter color just to to blend in the darker marks I just made so they're not as harsh that's the that's the look you're gonna have and again this is the the floor the bottom part so you're not gonna be looking at it head-on So here we're looking down onto the outer pieces. I've gone ahead and glued that wall onto the bottom. That's where the stone walkway is going. You can apply some glue with my glue gun. And again, you gotta be very careful lining these things up. Once they're down, they're down. Has to be tight to the wall and line up perfectly to the front. You don't want it overlapping too far to the left or to the back because you have to click those other ones into place. I just had the other ones taped there just to hold it. I've applied some glue and now I'm going to press this together. Again, you want to make sure it's flush with the front. The flat edges go to the front. And that's what it's going to look like. It's so cute. Again, you're not going to have a head-on look of this, unfortunately, but it's, it's nice to get a good look of it before you put it all together. Pop that little piece out. That's where the light's going to go in. You're going to make sure you paint this top and bottom. First, we're going to paint the bottom part, though. The top can be painted later. This is the light. It unscrews and these are the batteries I ordered for it online they don't ship with batteries I got that on Amazon again I didn't end up using this light I couldn't get it to work properly you load these little batteries in there's I think you have to put three in the thing just wouldn't turn off it was weird and when I kind of got it turned off it would flicker back on again I also didn't like how low it hung inside of the book nook so I took it out and ordered some little tiny wee I think they're called balloon lights from Amazon they're little balls they're smaller so now we're going to attach the next wall but you have to Again, be very careful when you're applying. You want to make sure that the outer wall facing you is flat, not the notched wall, because that goes to the back. And then the notches are on the bottom of the wall, not the top. You have to make sure there's space when you glue it down. So flush with the top, because this, the bottom has to have that little gap so that it plops into place down below. If you have the wall glued down too far, it won't it won't latch in. We're gonna leave that plastic wrap on the mirror until after we attach it. Same with this, you're gonna have to line it up, 
make sure it's flush at the top like right there and you have enough even space on the sides and that's what it does it clicks into place you apply your glue you click it into place so there they all are attached together be very careful with the mirror because you don't want to get um, fingerprints and stuff all over it and then you have the, the, the book nook put together you won't be able to get in there and clean it so now you can see the notches are sticking out right there for me to apply the roof that's nice and flat at the back now that's applied to the top So cute. I'm really happy with how it turned out. My little tea time sign. Again, you can make whatever shop you like. I want to paint the outside of the box. So these are the tones I'm going with. Similar to what those shutters are, I guess. The best way to do this is a sponge. I got a bit of water on the sponge. I mixed the color and then I applied it. It's going to take a few thicker coats to go over the, the darker spots where the wood joins there. It's going to take a, a few coats for that. Now, I mean... This is a book nook. It's supposed to go on a shelf with books. So technically you're not going to see the sides if you have books up against it, but it's up to you what you'd like to do. I'm going back to those coffee stir sticks and I want to paint them um, this slightly darker color and put an edge the front because I don't like the, you can be careful with your fingers, snip the top, make it a, flat. I, I don't like how the front looks with the two pieces glued together. I want it to look, have a more finished look. So I'm going to apply this like this and go right around. So you have to remove the rounded edges. So I've trimmed it. I'm applying it with my glue gun. And then I just have to measure the next piece and that's what it looks like i'm gonna go in and just paint over where i've joined them i think that looks a lot better than having the two pieces showing at the front with that little gap i think this is much cleaner looking You can make so many little things out of these stir sticks too. So I think it's kind of handy to have them for any future projects. They're easy to trim. I'm just going to go ahead and paint that pole so it matches the rest of the trim. And that's what it looks like. I like it. Now for the little lights that I ordered on Amazon. See how tiny they are? And you, I keep this piece of plastic because you just stick it back in when you want the light to turn off. I did not glue this on the top because there's no way to re redo a battery on this. They're one, one time use. So I just lightly stick it on there sit it on there I should say and then the other one I, I, I wanted more light in there so I took one and I wedged it behind my little flower pot and below that window it just kind of shoved in there and stuck there and this is what it looks like lit up and when I ordered that they came in a bag of like I don't know like 20 of them so 
I've got plenty to use over the course of time. When they run out, I'll just replace them. I like that a lot better than the one that came with the kit. So that's my book nook. That's how I painted it. And if you have any questions, please leave them below and I will help um, answer anything that you have uh, problems with, questions about. Um, I, will, I will help the best I can. I really enjoyed doing this. It took me a long time, I'm not going to lie, but thank you so much for watching. I super appreciate it. Any support that you can give me, like liking, commenting, or subscribing to my channel, helps me so much and I really truly appreciate it. So thanks for watching and bye for now.